Hello there, my front-end friends. There's not a whole lot to say about repeating background images in CSS, right? I mean, it's something that's just sort of been there for a long time. I guess the main thing is we just don't really want them because it's annoying. We just these days often just throw a background size cover on things anyway. But what if I told you that there's something very few people know about repeating backgrounds and that's even including some of the most seasoned CSSers out there? Well, I actually just recently learned that there's couple of values that you probably don't know about that are kind of interesting and we'll even get to a potentially kind of cool use case I think uh, or a fun thing we can do with them anyway uh, a bit closer to the end of the video but first we're going to look at just sort of the basics and dive into a quick reminder on how repeating backgrounds work since as I said people usually do a background repeat of none or just the background size of cover and they're happy with it uh, so here is my the, the front end friend a uh, little logo thing that I have now. If you like it, you can get a t-shirt. It's on there too. And let people know you're a front end friend. The link to that is just down below. <laughs> but um, yeah, we have this and I've just put it as a background image on my body and it repeats and fills up all of the available space. And then of course we can, you know, background size that background size of say, I don't know, a hundred pixels. And then it's that size, play around with the different size. It just repeats and it fills up all of the available space, especially because it's on the body right now. Now, of course, what we can do is we can come in and uh, control that to a certain extent with that background repeat that I was just talking about. And let's make the code slightly bigger here. Um, so we can come in with a background repeat. And then, like I said, we can do a no repeat. and then it's not gonna repeat at all. I just have the image one time, or I can repeat it across a specific axis if I want. So we can do a repeat X uh, like that. It's only gonna repeat on the X axis, or we can do the repeat Y, and then it's only gonna repeat on the Y axis. I'm assuming you already knew this, but just in case I wanted this quick recap. Uh, but one thing that's really important when we're doing these repeats is uh, it just fills up the image over and over and over again, and it just crops it off. And that's the thing with background images, right? They just repeat themselves over and over and over again. So here, if I go like that, like it's just repeating and it's just cropping off where it needs to crop it off because it's filling up the space with that image at the size I said. And background images are always cropped. And I always tell people use background images if you don't mind it being cropped off. The one time that, that there's an exception to that is if you use a background size of contain. Um, and then it just means it might not actually fill up the entire space, but at least you'll see your entire image. I don't use that one very often, but it is out there if you need it. But as I said, there is a new value here and there's actually two of them. We'll start with the first one and then we'll, we'll check the second one out after. Uh, and the first one is, you might've seen it in the thumbnail. It is the background repeat of space. You'll notice something change, but it's not super obvious what. Uh, but what it's doing now is you'll notice it's the that FEF there is four there four times, and we can see the entire thing. When we had it as the repeat X, it's cropping it at that right side, right? And if I move this, like it just crops the image off wherever. And let's shrink this down a little bit more, and then let's go back to having space here. And now we're only gonna have three of them. Hmm, what's going on, right? It's kind of interesting, and it's repeating the image but it's making sure that it will never crop the image. So as this gets bigger or smaller, see how it's like, okay, we're doing our thing, but oh, at that point it disappears because there's not enough room for the three of them to be there and have them all there. And then we can go this way and add more of them. Kind of weird, right? And kind of interesting. Now I'm gonna make a small change here just to make my life a little bit easier for demo purposes. And so I've put in this div of repeating BG that I have right here and the advantage is I can resize it. So we can sort of see what's going on. Once again, we're in the, the, the default use state here. Um, it just makes it easier for me to resize things. That's the only reason I'm doing it this way. Um, so once again, we have the background image there, so we can do a background size, let's say 150 pixels, and then the background repeat of space right there, and you see it works in both directions. And right now you might be going, hmm, this is really weird, or you just thought of a really cool use case, and I hope that's the situation. Uh, but even if you haven't, you know, like this is a really strange property, and I don't know how I'd use it, it is kind of neat that it's never cropping anything, and I think that's really, really nice. Uh, as we get smaller, it sort of gets weird because you have so much empty space. So it really does depend on the image and the size of your image as well uh, and how you're going to be using it. But it works in both di directions. And of course, this background repeat is a shorthand as well. So you could also do this with space and no repeat uh, in the other direction. And you could move this on over to the beginning and have it as no repeat space. Um, so you can have it go in one direction or the other. or 
uh, if you wanted to, you could have one of them as a regular repeat and the other one as a space, uh, which is kind of interesting, kind of different, but you know, the options on the table if you want it. But yeah, if we just do the one property here, then it's going to use space in both of them um, rather than only in one of the directions. And I think, I don't know, it's kind of an interesting one. And as I mentioned though, there is another one, but this is before we get to sort of the semi-practical use case that I've come up with uh, for this, where instead of doing it like this, what we could actually come and do is with a round. And round is a little bit different. Um, because it's actually going to sort of stretch and pull at the image a little bit. You can see it's like changing size as this is happening. And if you have the right, like if I, if I had this at the perfect, um, what's it called, aspect ratio, as I was resizing, it would always keep my logo thingy there the right size. Um, but maybe it wouldn't even <laughs> as I'm doing this more. But basically it's the exact same thing, but uh, instead of increasing or decreasing and having empty space. It's not including any. This image does have some empty space around it, which is why we're seeing some spaces there. Um, but it's going to have no space between the images at all. And it's going to sort of just squish and pull and, and round, I guess, round off the sizing of it to make it fit in a way. This one, just because it does distort the image, um, I see less practical use case for it. But once again, I, I hope that you can think of something cool to do with that. And if you do have a good one for round, actually leave a comment down below, or we're gonna look at uh, an example now of what we can do. But if you have another thought that has crossed your mind, or if you've ever used this in production, please do let me know what you did or how you did it or whatever it is. Because this is one of those things where I'm like, I'm sure there's really awesome use cases for this that aren't even crossing my mind. Because these weird little niche things, they usually have these like, oh, that, is perfect for this like weird thing I never would have thought of before. So if you have any thoughts on those or if you've ever used it, please leave a comment below. And just really fast before we get into the other example, I do want to just show you fa uh, quickly here the browser support. This is as of the time of recording. I'll put a link, I guess, down below, but it's basically perfect. If you can do anything, if you're writing CSS, this is as good as browser support for anything is going to get. So uh, yeah, you can use it either one of these without any worries. So yeah, let's jump over to this. <laughs> I, I, I don't, there's probably better ways of doing this, to be honest with you, but I thought this was like a, a interesting way that we could approach this type of thing. So uh, we're gonna do like a star rating system where you can choose how many stars you want, and then it's gonna show you that many stars using in the background image, which um, I've never thought about doing this before, but it just seemed like something we could do. So just really fast, I have a select here with some options in it. So nothing too fancy there. There's just a big font size and a bit of padding on there. Um, and then if I look at my JavaScript, we're grabbing that. So let my star rating be my select menu right there. Nothing too complicated. And then we're going to add an event listener where that event listener is just going to look for a change. So anytime we select and then actually click on something. So we're changing the selected thing here. We're going to set a property on the body of star count. And then uh, we're just grabbing the value. So the value is, you know, option one is zero, two, one, two, three, four, and so on. So nothing too complicated at all going on there. Um, and then, yeah, we can do stuff with this. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to know what you think about this too. Um, if, if you think, like, Kevin, this is not the best example, or, or this was cool, and I'm, you know, could maybe not use it exactly like this, but we could do something similar um, if you want. So I don't have much right now. We're going to look at sort of what I have set up here because I have a background image on my rating here, but we can't see it. Uh, so I'm going to come here and let's just give this a height for now of, uh, I don't know, we'll say 10 rem just so we can see something. And there we go. Maybe I'll do 15 now just so we can see that our background image is in there. And uh, we're going to improve this so that doesn't happen. And so we just have like our stars showing up right now. And for me, what I, anytime I'm doing something is we're going to have sort of some calculations and some other stuff going on. I want to make it easy to come in and make changes to it. So here I'm going to say that we have a star size and let's just go in with a 10 rem for now. And we're also going to do a gap. We're going to say, I don't know, we'll go with five pixels because of the way space works. It's going to leave space between my stars. I want to be able to control how much space that actually is. So we can go in with that right there. So here we obviously, we don't want things repeating like they're repeating right now. And so let's say the background repeat is going to be, and we need to change two of them because I'm going to do a space this way, but then I'm going to do a no uh, repeat the other way, just to make sure they're only repeating left to right and not repeating up and down. So that is perfect. And then we can also come in and say that the background size is my var star size. And that way they probably won't change very much. But if I come in here and I make that smaller, it's going to you know, change the size of my stars. I think a smaller value for this one will work better. 
So that's the beginning and you can see sort of the idea, right? The, the, the bigger or smaller this red box is and we get rid of the border eventually on this but it just sort of highlights how it's working. Uh, so we can just have a set number of stars and we wanna control that space that's in between there. So when we do this and we get our star count uh, from the drop down here from our select menu, it's passing one, two, three, four. We're getting these unit list numbers, right? So we need to do something with those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to here and, or I'll come here actually, because we have a height. And with my height, let's add a width. And my width, we're gonna do a calc just because we need to add a unit into that number we have. So we can do our var and it was star count, right? Star count. And we're gonna start with zero as a fallback. So if no, you know, if we haven't selected anything, the user's loaded the page, the default will be a zero. And then if we choose something, then it will use the star count there. So this is just a fallback if the custom property hasn't been declared or set anywhere. So I want my width to be my star count, but I obviously, I don't want my width to actually be zero. So what we're going to do is we're gonna multiply that by our star size. So times var star size. And look at that, it's down to two. And then I can go to one, and then I can go to three, and then I can go to five, and I can get whatever I want. Isn't that already kind of cool? Uh, now, there's two problems. One, the height is kind of ridiculous. So even though we have the no repeat on here, because it is a background image, like if my height was too small, let's make it just two rem for now, that could be problematic because it cuts things off. So for the height here, I think what I'll do is my var uh, star size as well, just to make sure it's always big enough. Uh, and if you want, you could even do a calc here and add a little bit of extra height to it. That would work fine. So we sort of have something that's already working, but my issue with it right now uh, is that when I do it, there's no space between the stars and then, you know, I don't need to use this space here. I could just use a regular background repeat and everything would work, right? I can, let's um, not take that one off. Let's just do it like this. Like there is no background repeat. No, it's sticking out there, but the same idea. We're just matching the size of the star. So let's take advantage of that and actually add some space uh, in there because I think that's what makes, you know, sticking together looks kind of weird. Uh, and I like that we'll be able to control it. And honestly, it's really easy to do. <laughs> it's just here uh, where not my background size, but where I did my width, we're going to make this a little bit more complex. Not really, but a little bit. So to do this, we, we could come in and I, I was hoping this would work where I could just do plus var and do my gap here. Um, because that will add, you can see there is a space there. The problem is, and if this doesn't bother you, but just like as we make it bigger, it's like ruining things, right? Uh, a little bit, because here, or sorry, at two stars, it's actually five pixels in between them. Let's make it a little bit bigger just so we can see it. So we actually have the space we want, but then when I go to two stars, uh, three stars, I should say, then it like halves that amount of space because it's dividing that between the two of them. And then we're dividing that space between the three of them. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna do a gap cal <laughs> calculation, just make it short. And then here what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna paste this in right here. And uh, just to, I don't wanna make any typos along the way basically <laughs> and forget a parenthesis somewhere. So now before I explain how this works, uh, let's just update my gap here to be my gap calc. And now we'll explain how this works. So everything should look the same, but let's go to zero and we have nothing because we have zero width. If I go up to one, we have one star, perfect. What we're getting is the width of my rating is exactly the size of the star because my gap calculation here will be zero because we're doing star count of one minus one. So we have a zero times my gap, but zero times my gap, it doesn't matter, it's zero. Then we go up to two stars and we're gonna have a gap of 15 in between the two of them because we have two minus one. So we have one now times my gap is 15. Do it at three. See how my last time, remember before it was like shifting every time we added, now it doesn't shift. So if we did four, four minus one is three times the gap times 15, 45. So it's gonna end up evenly distributing that 45 in all the gaps we have here. Very flex boxy and like the same way a justify content space between would work, but we're sort of having to do the work ourselves here. It's exactly what this is. And now I have a star count that works. <laughs> uh, there is one issue with it is if you made your gap too big, so let's just come here and make it, I don't know, 10 rem. Um, it's gonna break things. Uh, Cause now, you know, it doesn't, it, it's going kind of crazy. 
Uh, so you could actually, um, I'll put a finished code pen that actually has a bit more complex math going on here that actually prevents you from putting too big of a gap based on your star size and stuff. I don't want to get into nitty gritty. I wanted to look at this property and I think it's pretty cool. Um, so this is happening thanks to our space that, that enables this and makes it all happen, right? And if I bring that back down to five, now we have a gap and it lets me control it. But anyway, an interesting sort of obscure CSS property that you could probably do some interesting things with. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to know other CSS properties and stuff that people don't know enough about, uh, there's a much more practical one, I think, where you can actually do all sorts of controls on your underlines for things like links, where you can control things like the thickness, the offset, the color, and other things as well. A lot of people end up doing pseudo elements and borders, but you do not need to do all that. There's easy controls for all of those things. And I've covered all of those in a video that is right here for your viewing pleasure, if that sounds good to you. And with that, I would really like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.